All right, episode two of Ruby is... It's good. I like it. Um, anyways, so uh, Ruby and Yang land to be land on Beacon Academy um, from their airships, and it's uh, ooh, it's just really nice looking. Um, <clears throat> if I have to address a bit of a negative, and I can understand why, is that you know all the extras in the background are just like black silhouettes, probably of the same like three four models. Like I get it. Like this is just like they're doing their own show, so they have to animate all that. So. If they were to animate, you know, each individual character design, that could get, you know, expensive. Um, <clears throat> but anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, Ruby's kind of just freaking out. She's like, oh my god, weapons, people, teachers, people! <laughs> um, and uh, Yang kind of ditches Ruby. It's like, uh, yeah, my friends are here, bye. <laughs> it very much has a sort of anime style to it. Like, Ruby, beco Ruby becomes like a chibi-esque thing at one point. And then she bumps into the white chick named Eris. Um, Eris. Eris. I don't know. Who's apparently um, bringing in all this, these dust cartridges and whatnot. Uh, and then we also meet the black chick. I don't, I don't know if her name was given in this one or not. We meet her as well. And apparently uh, Eris, she's like sort of the heir to this huge like uh, dust manufacturer corporation. But also, they're apparently a very controversial corporation that <coughs> uh, work labor laws and violations and whatnot. And yeah, so, but she's a bit of a bitch. <laughs> White heiress. Um, which is so weird, considering what we got from her trailer. I expected something different, maybe kind of like the shy type. The black chick intervenes when heiress is like mouthing her mouth off to uh, Ruby. <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, and, you know, she just not really saves her, just kind of, like, you know, clears it all up. Um, and, uh, I think that they mentioned the dust has elements, lightning, fire, energy, wind, I think. I don't remember. I know lightning and fire and energy were one of them, or some of them. Um, something that happens, and Ruby's just kind of, like, overwhelmed by it all. She's like, ugh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be tough getting friends here. Then she meets this bit of a hunky guy. <laughs> well, not really a hunk, though. He's a bit of a nerd. That it was the guy who was about to throw up on the airship named John. They start walking and talking for a bit. Um, it's cute. Uh, is there something going on between the two? I don't know. It seems like it. I mean, <laughs> um, and apparently, uh, Ruby explains that Signal, that at, when she was at Signal, she built her Scyther rifle, which is what I'm calling it. She built the weapon. <coughs> and, uh, well, John, he just has a sword and shield that were just uh, hand-me-downs from his great-great-great-grandfather, I believe, during the war, which is unique, I guess. Um, they're just sort of walking around, just trying to get to know one another. He has a good line. It's like, strangers are just friends you haven't met yet, which I thought was cute. Um, but yeah, he's very much, like, nerdy. Uh, like, a very much wimped out, wimpy version of Cloud Strife. Oh, my God, they have the Final Fantasy references again. Um... <clears throat> Excuse me, just a bit sick here. Uh, but, yeah, I like where it's going. This is apparently a two-part episode, but I'm going to just do it, you know, once per day. Or, or, you know, I might do it later today. I don't know yet. Um, but, yeah, I like where this is going. It's setting up pretty well. Um, I forgot to mention uh, Yang, her character. I like in a, her trailer and in the intro, she has a motorcycle. That is a pretty sweet-looking motorcycle, and I hope it comes back for later in the series. But yeah, so we've met all the four characters now. They're all in the same location, so it's just a matter of the pieces are on the board. Now we're now we're gonna see where they go, and uh, yeah, we'll see where they go. Um, that's all I have to say for now. This episode I thought was good. Uh, you know, it's nice seeing sort of Ruby trying to uh, just yeah, she's clearly like you know young, two years too young for that for Beacon Academy. Um, <clears throat> And it's just a matter of, like, you know, it's like, we have all kind of been there, like, sort of, not necessarily stage fright, but just like, you know, hey, well, I'm the new kid, I gotta get used to it. Um, but, you know, hopefully she'll meet some friends and whatnot, she's already met one friend, so, like, where that's going. Uh, what else do I like? The animation is still pretty good as usual. It is, it is, you know, popping out the anime-ish traits of, like, Ruby becomes chibi Ruby, going, ah, at one point. Um... <coughs> Or the anime-ish sweat drops. Uh, 
I like how Yang was just like, sorry, my friends are here, bye. I'm like, really? Like, your sister, like, she's, <laughs> she's scared and nervous, a place she's never been to, and yeah, all that. Um, but we'll see where it all goes. Uh, if I must say, I think the voice, who's ever voicing Ruby and who's ever voicing Eris, they sound a little too similar. It's just how I see it. They just sound a little too similar. It's just like, uh, if I just shut my eyes for a second, I wouldn't know who's saying, I wouldn't know who is who. I, you know, there is a difference between the two, obviously, but it's just, they sound very similar. But, you know, just how I see it. Um, but yeah, I like where it's uh, going. So I hope it gets better. So, see you next episode. Bye.